So, what I'm going to do is import a image sequence of 32-bit uh, VGPM uh, remote sensing images. Okay. As you see here, if I move my cursor around in the ocean part of this image, uh, the uh, values are range in thousands of values uh, across the uh, pixels of the image. And then on land, they're all calibrated to negative nine 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 all right the first thing I do is cal is calculate a histogram for the image and I'm going to use 256 bins which is the standard uh, for an 8-bit uh, image or an 8-bit display I'm going to use the entire stack histogram so it's going to go through all the images in this stack there are 65 and uh, cal calculate a histogram for this Okay, one thing you'll notice about the histogram is that most of the values are clustered around the middle. And then because the, uh, the land or the, the, the non-applicable values are calibrated to negative 99999, uh, the, there are a range of values here for which are not, uh, that are not being used in the image anywhere between negative 9999 nine and uh, a zero essentially zero so what I want to do is find out what the lowest value is that's really used in the image other than the land values and if I look at the histogram list and what I did is I clicked the list button to get there I can see that negative 63.935 is the the lowest image that has a, a number of counts in the image so what I do then is uh, to, the first thing I want to do is cut off this tail of, uh, of values that don't really have any pertinence and that will confuse an 8-bit image and make it difficult to calibrate the image. So um, what I'm first going to do is uh, use a process called thresholding. So I go into image, adjust, threshold. And then I'm going to drag the thresholding bar up to the top value in the image. And right now, everything is covered in the image. And then I'm going to gradually bring it in very close to where the, uh, the lowest real value in the image is. And then I'm going to click the Set button to put it in exact, exactly. And it's negative 63.935. And then I'm going to click OK. So now that we have now we have an image in which all the the real values in the ocean or in aquatic bodies in the uh, image are selected. The next step is to use the apply function in thresholding to uh, that will apply this thresholding so that only those Im those values the real values are the ones that are used in the image. And as part of the, the apply function, it'll ask me if I want to set the background pixels, pixels to non and little a n, big N. And that's what I want to do. It makes the, essentially sets them to a nonsense value level. I click OK. Ask me to process all 65 images. I definitely want that. And I click Yes. OK, then I wind up with this image that I can now see uh, by clicking the reset button and you notice that the image becomes really dark that's because we've turned it into a very low co contrast image and we'll take care of that uh, in a minute by applying uh, an LUT to the 8-bit image so I'm going to uh, close the thresholding window and I'm going to save this image as it is so that we can come back to it in a little bit to look at our results. I'm going to do that on the, uh, the desktop. Okay. Okay, so now we have this low contrast 32-bit uh, image. You can see that it's 64 megabytes in size. 
What we want to do is uh, convert it into a calibrated 8-bit image that will be a lot smaller and which is better for posting on the internet and sharing with students and things like that. So um, to get the data that we need for doing the calibration, go back to the histogram window, create a histogram. This time, instead of creating a histogram with 256 bins, we're just going to create one with 255 bins. And I'll show you why in a minute. But uh, we click OK, and it processes through the stack, and we wind up with a histogram where you can see now that the lower tail is uh, against the left side of the, the uh, histogram graph, and it spreads out across the values spread out across the entire a range of 255 bins. We're going to create a list here of the uh, of the pixel values uh, of the bins in the in the image, and I'm going to save that bin or that uh, histogram or this file as a, as a an XLS file or an Excel formatted file to my des desktop. Okay, then I'll close that down. And we'll use that, that information to calibrate the 8-bit uh, the image that I'm going to produce right now. To produce that image, I just select image type, 8-bit. And you can see that the image uh, has instantly uh, changed from a 64-bit um, stack to a 16-bit stack. Looks exactly the same on screen except that now all the pixel values range from uh, 0 to 255. In fact, I can look at that and show the histogram here. And you can see that they all range from 0 to 255. They're no longer calibrated. They're just uh, gray values. All right. To calibrate the image, I'm going to use a spreadsheet program. In this case, it's uh, numbers. Okay. And we'll see all the values that uh, I exported from the histogram before. I'm going to change this heading to just be index because we really don't need the count of the, uh, to calibrate the image, we don't need the count of values. And what I'm going to do is a little trick here. Uh, Instead of these, uh, the count, the cells count values, and what they are is the the numbers of pixels in the image that have the this particular that fall into this particular bin value. What I'm going to do is just change this to the index values for the 8-bit image. And uh, in a spreadsheet program to start a sequence, I just type in a few numbers, and then I spread it down all the way down to the bottom here just to get my 1 through 255 values, which is the standard for an 8-bit image. Uh, the reason I'm uh, normally in an 8-bit image, you have values that range from 0 to 255, so you have 256 values. In the 8-bit image that we've created, all of the land is now 0, so really all I want to do is make 255 bins of images of, of pixel values that uh, have the real calibrated values from the 32-bit image. Okay, next I'm going to just uh, select all of the values, the real values from the 32-bit image, the 255 bins of values. And I copy that. I'm using Command C on my Mac or on the PC, it'd be Control C. Creating a text file so I can just get rid of, uh, just make it a pure text, uh, pure text uh, of data that I'm trying to work with instead of having the, uh, the spreadsheet format applied to it. And then I'm going to go back and do the same thing with uh, my 255 values. 
if I were doing a lot of these, I think I would just probably create you know a text file that has this information. Paste that in. Now I have a text file with the 255 values, one one to 255, the index values, and then I have one with 255 real values. Okay, so let me show you how we're going to work with those. I'm going to close the uh, spreadsheet because we don't need that anymore. And we're back in image J with our 8-bit image. The function we're going to be working with is called calibration. And you access that by first you're going to click on your image to make sure it's active. So I click on the top of the window bar. And then I um, click Analyze, Calibrate. Okay, this brings up this window. And I'm going to go in and select all my uh, index values. And I click here. Paste those in on the left column. And then I'm going to go back and get all my real values, select those, copy them, and then paste them in on the right column. So what this uh, calibration function is doing is it's saying that uh, pixels that have a value of 255 will be have a VGPM value of 14,330.661. Okay, for the unit, I'm just going to type in VGPM. So it reminds me of what we're talking about. And then for the function, I'm just going to do a straight line function. Um, there may be a better function, but this is the, the one I've chosen to approximate the values. And when I click OK, you see the uh, regression function. And you uh, see that the dots, basically, because we have all the, the, the data values, they're plotted straight, straight along the straight line. And we have a very tight fit. Uh, regression function for this uh, for this calibration. Okay, so now if I move my cursor around on the image, I can see that uh, in the ocean, the uh, the VGPM values are now calibrated. On land, they're zero. Okay, and I have developed a an LUT or a lookup table that allows me to put a uh, put a uh, false colorization of this of this image. Okay, and that'll be uh, possibly the subject of another another uh, instructional video is how to create these LUTs. So now we can see we have this 8-bit image that I can save. I'll save to my desktop. I'll call this VGPM at 8 bit. Okay, so that we know uh, that it's now the 8 bit image instead of the original VGPM uh, 32 bit image. Okay, and um, if I want to uh, compare the uh, VGPM, I'm closing down my text files right now. If I want to compare the 8-bit values to the 32-bit values and how they played out, I can uh, create a histogram for the 8-bit image. Okay, and then create a list from that. So this on the right here is the 8-bit image. And then I can open up the 32-bit uh, image again, which I've saved to my desktop for this purpose. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll create a histogram of the 32-bit uh, image by going Analyze, Histogram. And this time I'm going to use 256 bins. And we'll click OK. And then we'll make the list. And we'll put these side by side. And really, uh, the lowest bin uh, the, the, the comparison starts here with uh, the index number one. And we can see that the, the new uh, calibration is not exact, but it's fairly close on down the image. And I think for instructional purposes, it's probably sufficient to satisfy uh, most teachers' needs.
so that's it thank you very much for listening and watching this uh, demonstration video